Hey folks. So, in other videos, Jen had alluded to we were going to try some different things with our videos and maybe go a different <coughs> direction. Not entirely. Things. No, but <coughs> you alluded that that was what we were going to do. <coughs> and the details of that are we felt like our videos got kind of long. Shocker. Frequently. Shocker. And it wasn't what was expected of a beer chug video or a beer tasting video or whatever for you know us to then go on to a conversation. But so we determined that <coughs> we would kind of split mm -hmm. our videos into podcasts so that anyone who is interested in hearing <laughs> us bullshit for a little while um, and laughing at us or whatever can do that and then we'll also do beer chugs or whatever but like our beer chug video the other day that was we had a couple that were yeah, we two did of them good, that were less than, both less than five minutes we did a good so so we would have those also but they we would keep those short short so we're working we enjoy doing our videos and we're working on improving the what we're putting out and we also talked about the basis of our new podcast venture um, is going to be the thing that I think I feel like one of the things that we're most expert on and that is that clearly you see us on here doing videos you see us cutting up with each other we're doing a lot of videos <clears throat> and this is really how we are all the time this isn't just for camera this is this is us right so, we're going to do a lot of different things in our podcasts, but the basis of our podcasts and the things that we're going to talk about when we are talking about, I guess, what our expert knowledge might be on is how to have that fun, enjoying being together even after almost 14 years of marriage. Because here in, a, in two four, weeks... Five, yeah, it's about two weeks. Now. It'll be two and a half weeks because it's on a Wednesday. Two and a half weeks. Yeah. We'll be married fourteen years. So, you know, when we do videos, sometimes we're going to talk about, you know, beers. Sometimes we're going to talk about UT football. Sometimes we're going to bitch about politics. But it's always going to come back around to. What we know, and that is about, you know, how to have a uh, have a, a fun marriage where even after all that time, you enjoy being together and you don't get, you know, and we do. We get drugged down into the day-to-day -day redundant stuff, just like everybody does. I mean, we won't, <clears throat> I won't go into details about our year, but we, we have had a of a year. Now we understand that there are people that are far worse off than we are so we're thankful we have what we have but we have had some well, ups and downs. Some pretty bad and things happen this year so um, you know but we saw each other through it. Mostly Josh saw me through it because I have my little breakdowns and but we, he we, keeps me semi-sane. But you know we learned and not that we've just then learned, but <clears throat> we, you know, we use that moment. And sometimes we probably will go into some details about things that happen to us, just because it will be part of what we're talking about. But when we hit those lows, we use that to come together. And when things get better, which now, I mean, obviously we're, you know, things are better for us. We're doing videos, drinking what to us is kind of expensive beer and yeah <laughs> well there's my <clears> part <throat> <laughs> yeah we, we just stick our yeah. pinky up um we're about to do one where we're gonna yeah we have not tried this a drink i'm so, a little nervous <laughs> um you know we just made a trip to the liquor store we're not like you know we're not <sighs> so i'm not saying we're just got all the money in the world to spend but no just using that example to say we got ourselves through the tougher times and 
uh, got to a better time. <coughs> so anyway, we'll talk more about that, but here's what we're doing. Today. We're catching up on all the years we were raising our kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we're just celebrating all the time. Um, so here's here's what we're doing. We started a new tradition this year. I know it's sad that we've been married. This is going. To, this is going to be our fifteenth Christmas. Fifteenth Christmas together and fourteenth married. Fourteenth, yeah. Total. But um, so I was like, I want to. I want to start a tradition. <laughs> mm -hmm. Traditions got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. So this year we decided we're going to do a twelve days of Christmas. So every day we started it on. Yes, we, we. It took us a little bit to figure out the math of it. You started it on the 14th, and that gives you, including Christmas, mm -hmm. 12 days. So every day between yesterday and Christmas, we're doing something for each other, with each other. This year, because whatever. it was it was kind of tough for us to actually sit down and think of things <clears throat> to do, we're doing six things twice. Yeah, and we'll develop it, you know. But it's six. It's six things, but clearly they're going to be different the second time. But yeah. So yesterday we ex we wrote letters for each other and we exchanged them. Mm -hmm. Um. And oh, it's a cat. It's chunky. Uh. And we one of the things that we also decided to do is we were going to. Uh, we we're going to do a food recipe, which that's our tomorrow. tomorrow. So we'll cook a meal together, a new recipe, try that out. Tonight is... Tonight is a drink recipe. Yeah, so we're going to try new drinks. So uh, we found one that was Christmas in your mouth. And then, um, of course, in true Josh and Jen style, then we started thinking about other things we could do with that we were buying to right. make other drinks. <laughs> so I guess while we're sitting here talking... We're probably just going to be slowly getting hammered, I guess. Probably. so. Because we're going to try a few different Good ones. videos, good times. But the first one we're doing is the Christmas in your mouth. And we decided that, as true Tennesseans, we're going to make it a Tennessee Christmas in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, on the recipe that we found, Christmas in your mouth was uh, three parts... Vanilla, no, three parts cinnamon. Uh, they were using Fireball. Three parts Fireball. And if you know about Fireball, it has um, antifreeze, right? Yeah, we read something about antifreeze that. Antifreeze in, it. in it. So, um, we instead, we've got... Jack Daniels. Tennessee Tennessee Fire. cinnamon whiskey. Oh, yep, yeah, yeah, cinnamon whiskey. And this is so good. So, but... We kept that Tennessee, and then it had one part. Um, it called for vanilla vodka, I think. Yeah, which we don't do vodka because vodka gives me a headache. Yeah, so we're keeping this Tennessee <clears throat> too. We got vanilla moonshine. Now we did try to find vanilla in. Um, we tried to find it in either Old Smoky, Smoky or Sugarlands, or but neither it, of them had it. But luckily, this is still from Tennessee. Yeah. Old Smoky and Sugarlands are more local to us. They're in Gatlinburg. Yeah. Um, which we're not far at all from no. Gatlinburg. This is, uh, says it's bottled in Nashville. So uh, the little label says from a sleepy little town in Tennessee. Then that Nashville's in Tennessee, but that's about as much as it fits that description. It yeah, is and, not little and, and it is not, not sleepy. sleepy. No. And this is from Throttle Down. Um, oddly enough, yeah, Full not throttle. No, I said throttle down. Full throttle. Throttle down is a little old dump bar here in Oak Ridge. Uh, it used to be named that. Oh yeah, it's changed its name. But uh, yeah, this thro is full throttle. Full throttle. I, I like the show. I don't know why, but I do. And Jesse's then, funny because he's always coming up with stupid shit to do and, and then trying you to kill himself. Splash of cranberry. Juice cocktail, and that is it is supposed to be Christmas in your mouth. So I guess cinnamon, vanilla, and cranberry. We shall Christmas. see. Christmas. So we're gonna find this out. So we've got our handy dandy little shot glasses here. Josh is gonna 
mix it up for us. Um, but the six things we've decided to do, um, yet, like Josh said yesterday, we exchanged letters for each other. Tonight we're doing drinks. Um, tomorrow is a food recipe. Sunday is um, make a gift for one another. <laughs> Monday is um, we're going to make ornaments together. Tuesday we exchange a gift. So we will do that two rounds. We're making it. I'm watching him because he's an he's ounce. poured his. That's the the Total. cinnamon. So it's going to be three quarters of an ounce of the cinnamon whiskey. That just smells good. It is good. Now the trick's going to be. That's why I got the syringe. I thought it would be easier. Well, maybe while it's so full. I accidentally stepped on, we had the lid, and we used, if you watched our videos, which we appreciate those who have watched our videos, we hope that some of you guys will decide that you want to watch our videos after this, mm -hmm. and, um, that does make about a quarter ounce, doesn't it? That's yep, dead on it. Dead on it. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, Thank you to those who have subscribed. We hope that more of you subscribe. Um, please like, share, thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, well, we're not. We might get a little. Our feelings a little hurt if we get a thumbs down, but you know it is what it is. We're still having fun, and that's what matters the most. And if you if you like us and our videos in general, but we have a video that you don't care for for whatever reason, and you feel like you know, thumb downing it. Um, drop us a little message and say, hey, I didn't care for this about that video. You it's know. probably talking because we talk a lot. Yeah. And as I've said before, it seems like the more we drink, the more he talks. And I talk a lot anyway, so it doesn't matter. So what do you consider a splash? Well, in this case, scientifically a splash is 1.25 milliliters. So, you can't really see it, I don't think, no, but it's kind of funny. Look, do you see the cranberry in the middle kind of floating oh, around? Oh, yeah, like just a little red. Mm-hmm. So, so, this is supposed to be... <laughs> this is supposed to be Christmas in your mouth. I actually smell the... I smell something. It smells like, like. I wonder if the clearly moonshine, it's alcohol, but it smells like alcohol. <laughs> like. I wonder if the moonshine sits on the. It's making my nose burn. <laughs> it's gonna be not not just for the alcohol purposes. It would be tough to shoot this because of the cinnamon purposes. The other drawbacks it might make you cough, oh. which could be spectacular and bad. I mean, event, I mean, when I say spectacular, I don't mean spectacular in like, hey, that's a great thing. I just mean it can be eventful. It can come out of your nose. I can only imagine that. <laughs> oh, that would be terrible. Mm. But it smells like we it's could look burn. like the dude that had all the oh snot God. coming out. So I'm gonna. I don't. Th I'm just gonna. You know what? Wait, I wonder how bad. Because in that video, he had ghost pepper gum. And it was a ghost pepper gum challenge. Yeah. And I want to, I kind of want to know um, about the gum. There's um, a whiskey with pepper. It's not the ghost pepper. It's habanero. Didn't we have that? Oh, that's pretty, it was pretty good, actually. I thought it was going to be, I couldn't imagine them together, and I thought it was going to be awful. But I actually thought it was okay. I'm not going to shoot it. I'm just going to... I'm going to get enough of a drink to taste it. But. I'm afraid if I just take a drink and then I won't like it. Sometimes I'm a bit of a wuss on this stuff. 
Maybe it needs more cranberry. Okay, well give me another shot. <laughs> what is it? What is it? It just really, it just tastes like the cinnamon. I don't know if you could see the cranberry in it now. Yeah, and the cranberry seems well, and that may be that too. Cranberry seems to go to the bottom a little bit. It still doesn't smell any different. <laughs> you like the I cinnamon, know. so you're going to yeah, like I know. it. I don't know why I'm nervous. The moonshine scares me. Why? I don't, it just, because it's clear and it's messing with me. Because I don't like regular plain old moonshine. I love the apple pie. I love the um, blue. Oh my God, the blueberry muffin is delicious. Uh, blackberry, the hunch punch. It's just really overwhelmed with cinnamon. Mm. Do you get the Christmas in your mouth thing, no. or do you just get the cinnamon in your mouth? I just get the cinnamon. <coughs> Which, I mean, it's tasty, but then you're adding in these other elements. For nothing. That. Whew, I feel some tums in my future. Because yeah. that burns like going all the way down. You need to pour it all. I have to step off to fix that real quick. Mm. Okay, so anyway. What are what else uh well, we talked about doing uh, the vanilla with orange to do like kind of a creamsicle esque. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, and then we talked about putting. Um, oh, we have the orange juice, which we were going to do vanilla and the orange juice. Like. And we got vanilla ice cream. Oh, and if you're new to the podcast and and haven't seen our video, well, you're clearly new to the podcast because we've never done one before. The um, our videos we burp, we burp animal noises. It's usually oinks or rivets, so don't expect like normal regular burps. So if you're like, what the hell are they doing? We're burping. Now I'm a little chill. Jen's personal temperature is entirely unrelated to the actual temperature of anywhere. I'm cold. <clears throat> I still smell the cinnamon. Oh, yeah. Well, that might give it a little neat little taste, too. We'll see. Josh was pouring because I spill everything. This could be heartburn city too. Yeah. Orange juice and moonshine. Oh, I'm just Here's to maybe not getting heartburn. Clinder. <laughs> you, you may just want to elaborate on <laughs> Bill Clinton to me. <laughs> no cigars. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I don't have a dress. <laughs> well, if you're old enough to remember Bill Clinton actually being president, you would know that sometimes he did this. I taste just like orange juice. And sometimes he did this. And sometimes 
He did them at the same time. You can taste a little bit of the moonshine, but it's mostly orange juice. Why well, don't even get a vanilla one? Mm -mm. There's a little bit, a tiny, tiny, tiny honey. Well, I was trying, I was thinking. I know, because you don't know, because this is 70 proof. And I'm, <clears throat> seriously, you know, sometimes well, the gotta, color of something will mess with you. Remember, so, 70 proof isn't 70 percent. I know, it's, it's like half, per, half of it, right, you said? Yeah, so it's, only, it's 35 percent. <laughs> okay. So but, it's not like as strong as, say, straight whiskey, which. Right. Well, I know, but I'm just saying, uh, the, well, the, the color of it is messing with me because I do not like regular corn whiskey. Yeah. <clears throat> do not like the taste of it when we go to Gatlinburg <clears throat> and we go to the moonshine places, which now you have to pay $5, which is fine. Those people work hard, and I mean, they're probably losing a lot of money giving away free samples. But you can... Um, well, you get, you pay $5, but and then you can get check. samples, and then that... If you Purchase. take the five dollars and then you do taste the samples, and then when you go and buy it, they'll but, take five dollars off. Right. So, if if you either you buy it and you, they have the little you know sample cups, but we've gone there before and um, gotten a little lit, <laughs> have a lot little buzz. Um, little buzz. Little buzz. I wouldn't say but that. you could get not lit, but you could get you could get a buzz from it. I mean, because they have how oh gosh several flavors. Yeah, but the shots aren't like shots. No, they're shots. not like they're this. Like a, they're like the little communion cup juice things. Yeah, hey, it can be like a communion. Right? Mhm. Mm Still orange juice. Now watch me do this. Uh, we're not tasting it, and I'm going to be fucked up. Well, I just and if you don't like curse words, do not watch our videos or podcasts. <clears throat> and if you say, come back and say, I don't like that you, you drop F-bombs like crazy, well, then I'm just going to tell you, well, don't watch anything else. I'm just tell you, if you don't like Because that's my favorite word. <laughs> then you might as well fuck off. Because I like the F word. There's, there's a little vanilla in that one. It's not like a cream stickle, though. No, and that's what we were going for. We wanted the vanilla to come out. And actually, and I did lick the lid of the moonshine thing. The vanilla, I'm not brave enough to take a drink of it by itself, but I, I licked some of the <coughs> some of it off the lid it reminds me of the vanilla tootsie rolls but anyway what i was supposed to say is the clear makes me think of the corn and i just it's messing with me to me you just get a tiny sip mm -hmm. dude <laughs> oh, whatever. He's a bully. I don't want to. You don't have to get like a drink. Burns. <laughs> what what it says? But, you but don't, it does really okay, I will say this, it doesn't taste bad. That's what I was trying to feel. But you. the burn. So I wonder what just try let's try some of this and the cranberry. Okay. Maybe we can get to the point where I can pour it soon. Oh man, that burns. <clears throat> Whew. You're definitely warm on the inside when you drink it. But see, I had got some, it seemed like there was a reason that we were getting it. 
getting what? The vanilla Jim Bean. Hot chocolate. We're oh, going to put it in yeah. hot chocolate because we we listen to the guy at the liquor store. I got some of that, which I, I like bourbon. Ooh. She does not. No. Um, the Jim Beam honey this and the vanilla. is very good. I oh. like peppermint. So we could yeah. try peppermint. We got rumple mints here. Rumple mints. Did get that off the recommendation of the dude. But now that but stuff, then I did see the cheap stuff. But that this stuff is stout. It's a hundred proof. And you know it. Yeah, but oh my god, in hot chocolate, oh, you don't need much. He was right on that. Yeah, you can overdo it. <clears throat> Watch me spill. It looks neat. Looks like grapefruit. It does look like grapefruit. So she's going for that one. I'm going for my. Mine looks more like pink. Fuck. <laughs> Kudos to you if you get the reference. And if you don't get the reference, you need to check out Ash vs. Evil Dead. Because it is... For one thing, it's freaking hilarious. Not bad. Some of these you wouldn't even know the alcohol was in there. Yeah, like this. <laughs> I'm not a huge orange juice fan. I, mean, I love I orange juice, but God, it turns my stomach up. You get a little, you get the, little bit the, of the heat. Yeah. Which you don't get with that. Right. But which is dangerous. Okay, when you don't, <laughs> I am terrible. I mean, that shot was half. Yeah. Well, when I when it comes to like Long Island teas made out somewhere, I don't always heed my husband's advice. But it's been a long time since I had one because I got sick as a dog. You want to tell them what the advice is? <clears throat> Don't drink so fast and have water. Water in between every drink. Yeah, I didn't do that and I had, I don't even remember. <sighs> but it was it was not a good night and it I've would. not had one since. But so if you don't taste the It'll alcohol. It'll reduce that hangover too. You get, oh God. I've, I've until, had hangovers for days. <laughs> You can tell there's sugary yeah, in the, the drink when it gets around the lid. It's it gets crusty. A little crusty. But this is great in hot chocolate. Probably good in coffee too. I'm not a coffee drinker, so it does not take much. Not for real. I wouldn't put it in. Oh my god, this is gonna be. I wouldn't put it in coffee. It mint and coffee, I don't. No. Well, I don't know a coffee drinker, so I don't know. That it would not be <clears throat> my personal preference. Surface tension makes me nervous. Looks like water. I bet it doesn't taste like water. I'm gonna we'll put two in there okay. to balance it out. <clears throat> now again. The peppermint is yeah. strong. Well, and I actually, by putting more moonshine in it, I'm weakening the drink because. Oh, but it smells so good. It smells like a. Alcohol content mint. wise, the rumple mint is mint. stronger than the moonshine. Because this isn't moonshine from the hills. Mm -mm. It's, you know. Which there's, actually, you're our not a moonshine drinker. No, our brother-in-law makes moonshine, or he did. I don't know if he still he does. Moonshine, and I believe that was well over hundred proof. I think you could have lit Scott's moonshine on fire. <laughs> but man, everybody, everybody else was like weirding out over, it, but it was smooth. He made good moonshine, actually. Kudos to kudos to Scott, because. Fill the 
Goldberg. Oh my god. <clears throat> it's good though. I think we can light our breath on fire. <laughs> it's not the alcohol that gets you. Ooh, it's the burn. It's the peppermint. I like the peppermint. I chew peppermint gum. I have peppermint mints. I mean, I love peppermint. I eat peppermint all year round. But just because... Uh, you if know. we were stopped up, we would not be after tonight. No. Just because I'm a future on the watcher, though, every time I do this, I think that my breath is as fresh as a summer ham. Even though it's not ham, but just because you can feel it on your breath. It's like those old, uh, the old peppermint patty commercials when they bite it, and they're like, when I bite into a York my peppermint patty. My favorite peppermint patty commercial was the one with the little old dude, and he's like, when I bite into a peppermint patty, I get the sensation, and he kind of giggles, and he goes, at my age, I'm just glad I get a sensation. <laughs> I want to hug him every time I see that commercial. <laughs> What's funny, that that shit was like back from the 80s. Like, that was probably body for the 80s. That was funny. Like, nowadays on a commercial, I, I remember the first time I heard somebody say, damn, damn on a commercial, and I'm like... TV. Well, I'm. Do you remember? Listen, somebody said like the that dumbass commercial. Yeah. And I'm like <laughs> Dumas. Yeah. <laughs> well, you remember Mr. Dumbass? I'm like, that's what that was on TV. It's like seven o'clock in the evening. Yeah. And well, now it's like, you you know, by the time you do you watch TV all evening, you've heard ass like eighty five times, so it's like you don't even think about well, it. Well, I remember like back in the day when you had like Coke and Pepsi. And you couldn't show if it was a Pepsi commercial. They could show the can, but they couldn't show Coca Cola. Or if they're doing the or, yeah, they could. They or had the to taste hide the, test. The competitor's yeah. label. So you couldn't even you you knew who it was, but they weren't allowed to show. And now it's like bam, bam, bam. You're so old, remembering things. I know. We were discussing that work yesterday. Do you remember such and such? Do you remember such and such? I mean, I remember having to use, uh, damn it, carbon paper to make copies of stuff if you wrote on it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember using, having to use a typewriter. I mean, I took a typing class. A what? A what? It was awesome when you had an electric typewriter. I remember chiseling on my tablet. <laughs> my ears are burning. <laughs> That's because somebody's talking about you. Probably talking about how old you are. Probably. I like the peppermint one. It's like when I breathe okay, in, it's still kind of cool. Okay, now I want to try the peppermint and... The moonshine and it was a splash of cherry. Cranberry. Cranberry. Start with a C. Cranberry, huh? Yeah. Mm, let's let's give it a shot with the spice weasel. <laughs> let's do it. We're here to try things, right? <laughs> yes, we are. This to bring us. Uh, we'll we'll go ahead and make a quick point to kind of bring us around to to the purpose to the purpose of you know what we about with our videos and everything but this really doesn't look like a lot this is a lot <clears throat> it's in a little shot glass but again this is hunter proof it is a lot it's a lot i'm starting to get that i, I can feel it just a smidge yeah now oh what God. vanilla yes and then cranberry and cranberry yeah we'll, we'll, we'll drop some cranberry in first for color for color give it a splash of color okay oh that's pretty I don't know if you can see the swirls in the camera. <clears throat> it's funny because it kind of is hazy. Like it's, you know how heat looks? If you see the heat off it of shimmers something. shimmers off of the see it? highway or something. Yeah, you can't see it on there. But well, it, set your glass down, we'll move you with vanilla. Dude, 
How about don't knock mine over while you're doing it? But anyway, before I was interrupted, I was bringing us back around to the point. There's a reason we don't sit around and bring the shots all the time. No, we don't. In fact, in fact, we haven't had shots since my birthday. This year? Yeah, remember we were doing the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I felt terrible. But it wasn't I, because of the game. Well, no. I don't well, know if I got some. I don't know what happened, but I did not feel We good. were going to play a drinking game involving ghost adventures. <laughs> one of us was going to pick the word dude, I think. And the other one was going to pick the bro. word bro. And who... It, Whoever picked the word dude had to take a shot every time one of the guys on Ghost Adventures said dude. Same for bro. And for same for bro. <laughs> and it was her birthday, but like I thought for sure Which was March and we're in December, yeah. so that's that's how long it's been since we've done shots. I thought for sure though I was getting laid. You know, because we were drinking, <laughs> everything was good, and then Two, like, two things didn't go our way. First of all, we picked an episode where they didn't say bro or dude at all. Which then we were just taking, like, pity shots. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was weird. It was like, somehow retroactively, a couple years ago or whatever, when they filmed the episode, they knew what we were going to be doing. I don't know. <laughs> and then... And that is the one episode out of all of them we picked. Right. And then, yeah, she starts, I, I, to, starts feeling really queasy. and Yeah, which is, you know, getting laid was my birthday present. So it well, sucked it was that, my present on her birthday. so It sucked that that didn't happen. But I did. I felt all of a sudden just really bad. So since, oh, it, that was Moonshine and Lemonade. No. It was lemonade. lemonade, moonshine, and tea. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. But I didn't feel good. But anyway. Very quickly. And we didn't drink hardly anything. No. But we think that drink. because the lemonade moon, moonshine was so sweet. Yeah. It was and it super was, sweet. It's good, but it oh my god, it's sweet. It's only like forty proof. Yeah, but the just the sweetness of it. It did not agree with me, and it made me sick to my stomach really quick. <clears throat> yeah. So. But anyway, yeah, so we don't just, you know, so that was nine months ago. We don't do this a lot. We do drink our beers and everything, but the point I was going to get at is bringing it back around to the initial point of the, uh, of the podcast was that... <clears throat> Trying this stuff out is a chance for us to peppermint. Mm -hmm. How is peppermint and, and you can't cranberry? taste the cranberry? Really? Can't taste it. Too much peppermint. My chest is burning. <laughs> well, we've had the alcohol. Oof. Yeah. <clears throat> even when even you kicked it up a notch on the peppermint that time, but well, I like the peppermint. peppermint. I like the peppermint. Even when you put half. Like, even when you put a little bit of it in the hot chocolate, and then you drink, like, and you got a whole mug of hot yeah, chocolate. Yeah, because we don't do, like, the normal little tiny teaser of hot chocolate. We, we have big mugs. Right. Well, Jen's philosophy is go big or go home, yeah. even when we're already home. Yeah, so. And then you put like, some of this in there. You put some of the... Do we even have any normal size coffee cups? I don't drink coffee out of normal size no, cups, so. he doesn't. But I, we don't do anything normal size. No. <coughs> anyway, go ahead. Sorry. But, no, well, I was just saying, like, you put a little bit of the of the rumble mints in a whole mug of hot chocolate, mm -hmm. you and taste you it. still, all you really taste is the rumple mints. Well, yeah, I have a buzz. You got a little bit of one. But... We tried vanilla and orange, didn't we? I'm curious about the orange drink. 
Hmm? The orange drink. Not the orange oh, juice. Oh, I'll go get it. Because I need to get a spoon for the ice cream. What's it called? <clears throat> Grinsip. What's what called? The orange drink. Woman? <laughs> I'll smack you on the butt. Yep. Orange Ocean. Hawaiian Punch. Hawaiian Punch. Yeah, so we keep the Hawaiian Punch Orange around for our grandkids, which we're going to raid a little bit of. I'm not personally big into orange juice. Um, but we're going to give it a shot. But anyway, while she's gone, then I can actually get a word in. Back to the marriage part of what we were talking about. Because most of what we've been doing hasn't really been talking so much about marriage. It's just kind of demonstrating us hanging out. I was talking while I had a chance. You talk way more than I do on these. I, which is surprising. <laughs> that is not true. Oh, yes it is. That is, yeah. <laughs> to, uh, WTFE. To, to quote Pablo as he references Ash. We didn't know if I needed a chaser. So. Yeah, and you haven't had to use it. No, I haven't. But anyway, Thank to quote goodness. Pablo as he's referencing okay. Ash, that is definitely false. That is not. I have an idea, so you just continue to do what you're doing. But I knew it was going to start to get melty. Thank you. But I have an idea. Okay. Go ahead. But I was just saying, messing around, experimenting. Uh, I'm gonna get the dogs barking now. Trying something like this. Um, doing these videos has been a recent thing added into our marriage, which we have fun doing them. Part of the reason we're trying to do podcasts now is because when our intention is to do a five minute video, we get carried away because we're having fun. And. You, you know, everybody that has work, that has kids, that has, um, um, of, you know, <clears throat> other family, whatever. Wife. Wife, yeah. Um. How is that compared? Because it was different. Okay. At some point, if you don't make a conscious effort to say, as a couple, we're going to have fun together. As a couple, we're going to focus on each other. We're going to take this time out. We're going to do this. Um, Go ahead. Well, no, I'm just I'm thinking as I'm... But you're going to lose that. And you have to... messes. That's nothing new. Go ahead. Continue. You, I mean, you have to work to keep that. And I, I say work, even when work is having fun. I'm thinking, go ahead. Well, I was just making sure, because I thought you were about to grab that orange. No. Yeah, okay. So I'm just making sure. Because that would have been undrinkable. I'd have tried it. You would have, but it would have been a lot to try. <clears throat> so, and I, I think in a lot of ways these videos have kind of become our thing. A little bit of outlets for us. I won't say, like, necessarily that you should have to have an excuse, 
to spend time together. <clears throat> well, I think, like but I said kinda... earlier, we've had a very tough year. Yeah. And I think <clears throat> that this helps us escape every day. And it, I mean, it's it is the everyday life that because this was something that we wanted to do anyway, the videos, the podcasts, and all. But, but this has given us. It, it starts out as, well, you know, we need to do a video so we have something to post, uh, or, you know. And it ends up being a lot of rumblements. Cold? You okay? Actually, that is. Oh, God. <clears throat> um, okay, I'm okay. I'm trying to concoctions here and. <sighs> that is what I taste like a lot. I don't think I put that much in it. Oh, my, <laughs> my cheeks are like on fire. I don't this. I don't know that. Do you? Okay, continue. I'm sorry. Well, it just... When we say... You know, we get lost in doing the video. Holy sweet Jesus. Is it good? <clears throat> Some of my nose. That's because you're trying to chug it. Yeah, I mean it's it's a cream sickle. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> I'm gonna since we eat after each other and everything anyway. If you don't mind me putting my mouth on the spoon. You can put your mouth wherever you want. Prefer it on me. <clears throat> and that's even pretty. Yeah. We got new glasses today. <clears throat> they have a little snowman on them. Mm -hmm. It says let it snow. Irish coffee glasses it says. Which Irish coffee is good stuff. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> Every now and again, my mom is like. The peppermint one I do not care for, and I love peppermint. Every now and again, mom asks me if I'd like an Irish coffee, and I'm like, Are you asking me if I would like two of my God, favorite things mixed good. together? Like, for real. Okay, for this one, <clears throat> I did the vanilla moonshine some orange juice and well I put the ice cream in first then I did the vanilla moonshine and then the orange juice on top of it because I wanted the orange juice and the the moonshine to mix and it tastes like a freaking cream sickle that's very good you see the candy melting at the bottom the the peppermint the, the peppermint is peppermint ice cream and then I thought to put some of the vanilla moonshine and the peppermint schnapps and I personally do not even think it's good but he's sitting here drinking it I'm taking one for the team <clears throat> it's so sh it's very schnappy it's schnappy it don't make it schnappy <clears throat> but, but I mean that's definitely have, better here let me see go ahead and talk well, you can chime in on this one too. I've been well, the one doing all no, the No, apparently I talk a lot. Well, in this case, I'm. And talking you need to get words in. Listen here, woman. Listen here, man. <clears throat> you said it, I didn't. Let's see if some vanilla will kind of mellow it out. But it's become an added escape for us. Our our long term goals. Can you give me the other napkin off the place? It's just this. That's okay. Are to start being able to do things like this. You did it on this side too. 
uh, together because we want to spend time together. And you're not a painter then. <clears throat> Okay, go ahead. These have become kind of an outlet for us to talk about things together, even if we're talking towards the camera, to share uh, it's probably about as much as it's going to hold. It is. And These are fun for us, so when we talk a lot on here, we're having fun, which is why we're talking so much. Which is probably annoying to people, but you know what? I really don't care. Because the point of it is, yeah, we like when people watch. We like when people comment, which we've had some great comments and, <clears throat> and everything, which we appreciate greatly. We have new subscribers, which we appreciate also. Mm -hmm. But for us... You know, please keep in mind that, again, this is an outlet for us. This is fun for us. This is something we enjoy doing, which is why we talk so much. And it's just, we need this. This is kind of like a therapy, I guess, for us. Yeah. And, you know, the burps and... Oi! Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. I mean, that was just Tommy. It's... I think God, that's good. I don't think I mean people who know us know us well I mean okay we have friends but we're not the type to like want to go out and hang out at bars or go <clears throat> here and there and wherever we like doing things together we're, we're like the couple that likes to we enjoy going to concerts together we enjoy doing everything together and we don't like going out and and hanging out and stuff like that and it's not that we don't like people it's just <laughs> well he doesn't like people <clears throat> um so much of our time is spent away you know, with work and everything, that when we have time together, we like to focus on each other. And we, personally, don't feel that that is a bad thing. There are people who, they love their spouse, but they don't want to be around their spouse all the time. They want to go hang with their girlfriends, or they want to go here, or they want to go there. And that's just not, you know, who we are. <clears throat> and it's not that we don't like our friends. It's just that we... Uh, prefer to hang out together and but again these are fun for us we enjoy these we like I said a moment ago these are kind of therapy for us and um, but I think in, in a lot of ways this is kind of it's kind of become our thing yeah and one of the things I think like some you see things where couples like maybe there's a lot of peppermint on that one. <laughs> it's been a lot of peppermint every time I've like a, like I you know on Facebook I like the Spartan race stuff and are there are couples that'll do that together and it's good for their relationship because they both love to do that, so it's a thing they can connect over. And I think any race I'm doing, I'm walking, because otherwise there'll be an issue. Um, but this has kind of become our thing. I think this has been very good for us. You know, <clears throat> we always have enjoyed being together. But since we've started doing the videos and that sort of stuff, it's kind of like it's giving a, given us a thing. Well, I am a worry wart, so I worry about anything and everything. I worry about stuff I can't control. I worry about other people I can't control. I mean, I worry about everything. It's one of those unfortunate things that I inherited from my mother. So, 
with that being said, <clears throat> you know, we have grown children. Our son is autistic. He has Asperger's, which he's really the easiest to deal with. And um, we have a daughter in Japan. She's married. And um, so, you know, she's, she's good. And our oldest, um, she's personally gone through a lot of struggles, especially this year. And, but, uh, you know, with, with our son and other daughter, it doesn't mean I don't worry about things. With the oldest, with her uh, personal struggles this year, of course, we struggle more and we've done a lot to help. And, um, but this, I think, doing these allows for us to stop for some time we are spending time together because we're focusing on this thing. We're not thinking about the 5,000 other things that I'm normally worried about throughout the day. It, get, it gives us time to stop. This is what we focus on. We're having fun with it. And we get long-winded. And it's just part of it. <clears throat> well, I mean... And for... You know, if anybody is watching this one... Who... You know, if you see this and you look at us and you've seen us bantering back and forth and you're married, you got a relationship or whatever, and you're like, well, I like what they have, you know, wish could have that or whatever. <clears throat> I think, you know, that's something to do. I mean, find your thing. Mm-hmm. For a couple, like, find that. And you may have to try a few things. Mm -hmm. There may be, you may try something and one of you is not as much into it or, or whatever. And you need to, like, every, you know, both of you need to be trying for each other. And, right. It's not a one-way street. But, but, you know, find that. All right, a little video blip there. But the point I was getting at is, you know, so bringing it around to what our podcast is kind of about is. There'll be some long ones, there'll be some short ones. Yeah. Or shorter, not short, short. But for couples, just the things that you guys can connect over, make those things important. What I was getting at a minute ago, because I'm terrible about getting sidetracked on my thought process. When I was talking about going out and stuff, um, <clears throat> like I said, some people, they need their time. They need their friend time. They need their alone time. They need their whatever. Um, I think a lot of people, <laughs> most people don't get our relationship, I think. And I don't think that a lot of people really see us. I'm sure that's strong. There's a lot. <clears throat> There's a lot of the peppermint at the bottom. They don't. It's some don't want to see us as a couple and happiness and and things like that. Others um, see us and I mean, we've had people tell us that we're just the cutest couple. Um, I say it all the time to myself, but. Um, we like spending time with each other, and not and it's okay if if you don't need to spend all your time together, or you need this or you need that. Well, I mean, you gotta, but <clears throat> Josh is my first best friend, all, so he's the one I want to spend my time with. First of all, I mean, when you're married, everybody is going to have this different amount of time that they want to spend with their spouse, and. That's kind of a before you get married thing. You want to kind of really pay attention and figure out. You want to be compatible on that. If you want to have a person that you can come home to and have a little time with, and then other than that, you do a lot of your own thing, and you have to make sure that you find somebody else that really has that same feeling. And 
if you want to, you know, if you're at work or whatever and you're ready to come home and be with, you know, and spend the whole evening with your spouse and do that, spend your weekends, you want to make sure that you've got a partner that's compatible with that too, that they want to do that also. You don't want one of you who wants to spend all your time with together and another one that wants to go out all the time. You know, there's nothing wrong with it, whichever way you want to be. But you want to make sure you, that it's a compatibility. compatibility. Otherwise, one of you is going to be unhappy. <clears throat> right. But, and, you know, even if you, even if both of you like to go out with your friends, you like, you're just, uh, you know, extroverted and, gregarious and you like to talk to a whole lot of different people and spend time with a whole lot of different people then you know still everybody has to find everybody that wants to have a successful marriage I mean you have to have closeness mm -hmm. even if you're the kind of person <clears throat> who likes to talk to a lot of different people and spend time with a lot of different people and have your friends and your people at work friends and you still have to have that the, to the person you're married to, that thing that brings you a connection, you know. And you have to find that and you have to make it important. Yep. I mean, Do things for one another. I mean, you know, we, we little, have a lot little of time. things. I mean, leave a little love note, you know. Um, just, you know, do something. That you normally wouldn't do. Just do something nice for him. I don't drink coffee, but every morning I make his coffee. You know. But Not only do I make it, I pour it and set a glass beside the bed for him. Because he is not a morning person. That I know. But. You just. Yeah. You, you have to. You have you have to make it important. Mm -hmm. You can't and, let and everything else had, consume consume you. And we have a lot important. of things that compete for our attention, mm -hmm. and there have been long periods throughout our marriage where we have allowed those things to take over, and then it usually ends up coming to a point where you have to work really hard to. <clears throat> get back around to the focus because you've been pulled away so much. And well, I think it makes it a whole lot easier <clears throat> if you're maintaining that focus, you right. know, day after day and well, week after week. If, if you're finding that time together, if you're spending that time together, and then think something comes along and it takes up your time and you have to focus on that for a little bit, it makes it a whole lot easier to come back together if you spend a lot of time together focusing on it in the first place. Well, I, up until, I guess, really we started doing these videos, um, as you mentioned, a lot of things consume our time. And we finally, you know, we've, we've had kids, we've got grandkids, we've had things happen left and right this year. And um, we, the, uh, again, I, I keep referring to these videos as a type of therapy. But <clears throat> I think one, it's brought us, I mean, we're, we're a close couple anyway, but I think this has brought us closer together. And I think that finally, especially for me, it's, it, I struggle more with letting things go and, um, like I said, I worry about everything. I think these, especially over the past few weeks, I've really been better. I've been working really hard on not asking questions, not worrying about things, because if I don't know about it, then I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> and, um, I'm not saying that dads don't worry about their children when they grow up. Moms tend to worry still more but I worry way more than I need to 
I can't control anything our children do. I can't, con you know, tell them what to do. I can't tell them. I can, I can offer advice. That's all I can do. I can offer advice what they do. They can wipe their butt with it or they can take it and, and it, some of it or all of it or, but <clears throat> I'm learning the less I know, actually the better I feel. Because if I know too much, then I'll start worrying and I don't want to know. So I think that that has helped. And Josh is always referring to when you're on a plane, which I've never been on. But I know what he's talking about because I've seen it in movies. <clears throat> you know, if, if something happens, um, if you have, have a child, you take the oxygen mask first. You take it because if something happens to you, you're not doing your child any good. So don't give it to your child. Give it to yourself. And I'm slowly starting to, to listen to him and worry again about other things less and focusing on what I need to focus on because we've raised our kids. It's not our job to, you know, once they turn 18, they're out of the house. We do have Bryce still here. He's our son. But he's he's just different because he he's a pretty self-sufficient for the most part. I mean, we still have to do some stuff for him, but, you know, it's... He's the easiest. Um. Well, you can always, as, a, as far as the kids go. We've done our job. We don't have to do that anymore. And now can, is our time. You can be there and available as a safety net without always looking over their shoulder. I definitely want them to always feel like they can come to me. Because there's a difference between coming to me and you know they need venting or or talking to me versus manipulating and abusing. Right. Well, and I think in a lot of ways, in in our case, it's mm -hmm. been the safety net's been too close. Yeah. And they've just been more than willing to take advantage of it, even if they didn't need it. They knew that they could, they could disregard a responsibility because the safety net was so close that they would never feel the consequence of it. And it's okay for them to feel the consequence of these things. You, don't, you can let them fail in minor ways so that they can grow <clears throat> mm -hmm. without ever allowing them to fail in catastrophic ways. Right. But I'm pretty proud of myself personally on how the past few weeks I, I've been doing. Because those, yeah. for me personally, that is huge. Well, and, you know, if they fail in these minor ways and they figure out how to deal with it and get through, it can prevent these catastrophic failures, which that we always would end up suffering the the, the most, that. yeah. But sometimes, because they don't know how to deal with them when before it gets big, then it gets big quickly. Sorry. And the more we allow them to handle them when they're small, the less likely they are to allow it to get to something bigger next time because they they learn and experience is the best teacher. Yeah, and I'm, I'm since and my new attitude, if you will, I mean, they've, they've done better, and I'm glad. Well, I mean, we're the kind of people who ask, you know, and, you know, when we were younger, closer to their age, we're the kind of people who ask for help at the last resort. Not the and first. We, and we've had our catastrophic failures, too, that we've, that have been extremely difficult to deal with and we've had help mm -hmm. but we've also taken a whole lot drastic, of it we, upon ourselves yeah well to, we took drastic measures to avoid asking for help right you know, now when we say it's last resort it is absolutely right. last resort and there are some ways where probably we had people who were probably willing to help us way before we asked for it 
Yeah, but we wouldn't. And we didn't. And that doesn't. That's not. I'm not saying that's the best way to be either. There's a balance where you do I everything like that you. I don't like owing people. Well, some people don't expect anything. Well, some I know, but it, it just. I don't want that on me. But I'm just saying. In reality, there's a balance where you say family helps family. And yeah, well, you say family helps family, but not all family members feel like that. Some is some truly is family helps family, which is what we believe. And some of our family members do, but others are it's family helping a family member so they can hold it over their damn head. And make you feel like shit every time you turn around because you're still trying to recover from what hit you. And that's not right. Well, I mean, what I'm saying is in a perfect world, there's a balance where there are things that you can handle yourself. And you don't have somebody jumping in trying to help before it's necessary. But then also, there's a point where people are ready and available to help before it gets to be snowballs into an even bigger thing. Yeah. Because, you know, there's a point where you handle it. And then when it gets so big, if you get a little help, you can still nip it in the bud before it gets worse. And if you let it go too long... And then it gets real bad, and then it gets really hard to dig out of. And we've done that, too. Yes, we have. Sometimes pride overtakes a lot of stuff. And and I think that's the point where it's sort of like there's a lot of suffering that we would allow for ourselves that we would never allow for the kids. And sometimes I think maybe we allowed ourselves to suffer too much, and we protected them from suffering too much. Right. Because it doesn't help them. Because they had, you know, you can't, you don't want to prevent them from learning. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a tough thing to figure out. That's, you know, it's human nature for a lot of, for some people, you know. It, it's human nature for us sometimes to <clears throat> isolate. And it's also human nature for people to not want their kids to suffer. But, you know... It's also a point where you say, you know, yeah, it's human nature to isolate, but in this point in time, I need some help to before this gets any worse. And then there's this, you know, where you can also say, yeah, it's human nature to not want your kids to suffer, but they got to learn. Mm-hmm. So, which was very hard for me. It's a it's it's a balancing act, and now very, it's very not just. It's hard for me to let go of things. It's not just kids. At least, you know, we have three, and at least as far as one direction goes, it's not just adult children who are should be responsible for themselves that we consider. I mean, now we are also considering. You know, grandchildren who are, you know, collectively don't even have six years between them. So, you know, we try and consider those two. But in a lot of ways, that's where the, where the gas, you know, or the oxygen mask thing comes into play. You know, if we're always broke and we're always at a point where we are... Josh always says we can't help them if we're dead. Right. And we've been under a lot of stress for a long time. We can't sleep. We can't. I mean, we just... And all that takes time tired. off of you. <laughs> and, you know, with these videos, it's been kind of a recent phenomenon. But in a lot of ways, like you said, there's some therapy when it comes to that. You know? And in a very real sense, I mean, this these videos could be adding time onto our lives. I hope. <laughs> but this has been long, so we'll wrap it up. We want to thank you guys for hanging with us. And, um, you know, if you have any comments or anything or 
relationship wise we are not relationship experts we are only experts in our relationship but if you have any questions or um, advice on anything again we are not professionals but I'll gladly give my opinion on something I do not mind giving my opinion <laughs> but we can tell you if you want to know how we make it through something if you're if you're in a spot I mean we've been in spots where we were trying to fix things involving our relationship mm -hmm. you know and that's the thing I mean you know we love each other more than anything in the world no amount of love prevents you from getting into a spot mm -mm. So, if you want to know how we worked it out, or if you got something and you want to know, well, if you were in that spot, what would you do? You know, we'll at least tell you what we would do, and you can take it or leave it from there, you know. But, yep. But, you know, I mean, we'll say that we've, we've made it through almost now 14 years of encountering And it has a not... Lot. I promise you, it has not been an easy 14 years. And it's not us. <laughs> but the, in the end, it is not the bottom us. line is... So before anybody sees been, this and is like, Oh, well, I knew they, you know, this or that or what have you. Because we've had some pretty rude comments through our marriage. but Well, it's been 14 <laughs> years that we wouldn't trade. No. And... You know, it's been 14 years that are going to lead to a lot more. Mm -hmm. And like it or not, we love each other. And, and it's been time that I think we both feel like we've got just more better times coming. Mm-hmm. And feeling good. And really, you can't say that. When the better times are around, that they won't be made better because of the tough times that we made it through. The tough times definitely have strengthened us as a couple. And we've learned how to appreciate when it's good. Yeah. And anybody that's going through something that's tough together, I mean... A lot yeah. of, I mean, that you know, breaks a lot ago, of people. I it mean, does. Like, I, it breaks a lot of relationships up. And there, I am not, and I say this all the time, and I've said it in other videos, I am not easy to live with. I am bipolar, and I have, I can either have really high ups or really bad lows. Well, you know, I mean, six months ago, we were in the midst of. <laughs> Of the struggle in the midst of waiting for it to get better you know without going into too much detail we knew at some point at least a little bit of better was coming but we didn't know when right. and we buckle down together and we did the things that we needed to do to make it better together and that made the that worked towards making the moment that we're in right now better because I think we know how valuable Mm -hmm. It is. We know that these, whether it's five minutes or ten minutes or an hour, that, you know, when we do these videos, we know how valuable the time is. And, you know, as we, you know, we've talked about before, you know, there's been times when you know, our house is full because we were helping out. And we needed some time to each other. So we would go 
to the grocery store. It's not even a joke. <laughs> and just shopping together was... It was needed because time together was needed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of those hard times, I think, really taught us that you, we can't neglect that. No. We and always, we we always a, know we need each other, but the harder times, because when you're, when we're having good times, it's not as prevalent to us. Because we're having good times, but when we're having the tougher times, it kind of that's when it reminds us that we need each other. And I think over time that's gotten it's gotten better to where we realize, you know what, we can't neglect us being together right now. I know we're helping people, you know, I know we're doing this and we're doing that. But, you know, and I know we got to stop and get food. Because we're going to have to go home and make dinner and all that sort of stuff. But you know what? We can meet at the grocery store and for a half an hour, you know, we'll walk around the grocery store and you've got... We'll walk side by side and your outside hands on the buggy and my outside hands on the buggy and our other two hands, we're holding hands or whatever. But just, <clears throat> there's a lot of times through our marriage where we would have said, well, we have to do this, we have to do this, we have to do this. You want to stop by the store and do this? Okay, well, you stop by the store and do this and I'll take care of this. And Not that there haven't been occasions that we still do that, because we did that the other day. Well, yeah. But it was but, to get home sooner. But yeah. Because it was leaving work to get home sooner. And that was a little different situation, because we were going to come home and be together. Right. But I'm saying, even in a situation where we weren't going to do that, in, in the past, we would have made the mistake of neglecting spending any time together to take care of these things. And I think... That's one thing that we have really learned. I think these videos have helped. I think, you know, there were times in the ups and downs where when the downs came along, we really struggled because we didn't handle them together. And, you know, we made it through that. And now we're to a point where, you know, and just like every couple, I mean, there are moments that we don't get along. But... It's because it, he gets an attitude. It took a long time where there were times when that would last a while and it was really a struggle to bring it back together. And, you know, luckily we always did. But they don't last the way that way anymore. You know, we get them out, and it sucks, but they're, o they're over a lot better. Here's, here's the thing about my personality and his personality. <clears throat> there are times when I get mad, and I need to be mad for a while. Just leave me alone, let me be mad, and get it over with. He, does, he, gets, he gets mad, but he's... He just needs time to get himself back. It's not like me being mad and I need my time. Or, my other personality is, I get mad and then I'm fine. Which is really hard for him because he can't bounce back that quick. Now there are times, like I said, I can be mad for two days. I don't want to talk. Don't want to do anything. Just let me be mad. Then other times I'm mad. I get it out and I'm fine. Then I'm wanting to talk and I'm wanting to act like nothing ever happened. And he can't do that. And then sometimes that irritates me and brings me back down. But it's not his fault. 
because that's just he needs that time but it just so you know sometimes that is a is a thing but it it, it is happening less I don't always fight fair well we so. you know I think next to the past six months where when things were bad we paid more attention we would go to the grocery store and spend time together or you know whatever just making the extra effort to remember that if we're not focusing on each other then everything else that we have to do is also going to suffer mm -hmm. And sometimes you may have a hundred things to do, and in the end, sometimes you're just going to have to put them all on the back burner for a little bit of time and spend some time focusing on, you know, because you can't make, you can't put things more important than your marriage. Mm -mm. So you spend time focusing on that, and then you can get back to it. That's that's the whole thing about putting your oxygen mask on first. And then you can start helping everybody else again. But every now and again, you have to stop and regroup and make sure your oxygen mask is on. I think with all that, We'll wrap this one up because it's this one's pretty lengthy. It's our first one, so we're still a work in progress, and we're going to work on keeping them an hour or less. Um, <clears throat> might run over here and there a little, little over, depending on what we're talking about. Um, but thank you for joining us tonight and experiencing our drinks with us. Um, that was a neat experience because we tried a different, a lot of the the cream sickle thing was good. I'd it like to try it with this because you use good. orange juice I did as use we mentioned juice. though. I like orange juice. I'm not. So we'll we'll try that off camera, but um so y'all don't have to suffer through that. Thank you for joining us. Please like, subscribe, share, uh, leave comments, leave feedback, um, ask questions. Um basically, yeah, just interact, you know. Give us our thumbs up or a thumbs down, prefer a thumbs up. Yeah. And yeah, sh share it. Anybody else that help us make our our mark on this world? There you go. <laughs> so anyway, well, yeah. I guess uh, about a week. I guess we'll kick out our next one. Yep, we'll make it shorter than this one. Yeah, we had a lot to say today. Yeah, well, it was our it was our opener, so yeah, it was it was like a uh, you know a season. Uh, you know, like a news show or whatever where you got this started out with a two hour. Yeah, this is our two hour um, premiere. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, anyway. And plus more burps, more chugs, more guitars to yep. come on the shorter Keep videos, an eye out for so. our videos. Anyway, we'll catch you on the flip side. Peace. Rock and roll. <laughs>